Hello everyone, thank you very much for watching this video. So I got a really nice question about CSRF token protection in Spring Security and it's also related to the previous um, lesson I have delivered in the Spring Security Fundamental stream a couple of days ago. Uh, and the question is, um, can you actually uh, use Postman or CURL to call uh, a POST token or any kind of other mutating operation um, of um, an HTTP endpoint uh, using uh, CSRF protection enabled? Because in my previous lesson, I was actually using Timeleaf and I made that example simpler that way, uh, where Timeleaf um, helped me actually uh, print directly uh, the uh, or easier print the um, uh, CSRF token uh, wherever I needed it. Uh, and in that case it was uh, directly in my form that was executing the mutating operation but in uh, nowadays uh, we have uh, plenty of situations in which our front end is developed using for example angular uh, or um, uh, react.js or Vue or any other such framework for developing your fr your front end application and uh, usually the uh, and yeah in most of the cases actually the communication between the front end and the back end is done via some rest endpoints so that means that you should um, uh, be able to call those endpoints and to prove that and to feel more comfortable the choice would be to uh, prove that we can call them from postman and then if you call them from postman then you know you can call them from um, any kind of uh, other client including your uh, front-end application uh, and yes this is not a, a video to prove you how to uh, practically create uh, efficient and uh, angular uh, to uh, backend uh, uh, in a full application uh, so I won't discuss about that but I will prove you that you can use postman um, to call the uh, endpoints uh, using the CSRF pro protection enabled in Spring Security and how can you do that uh, and that should uh, at least uh, answer the question that I have received. So what uh, have I done here? I have actually already created um, a project and it's a very simple project. I didn't add anything to it. You see, it's only the main class here. So we will develop it together. And uh, the only dependencies I have uh, are the web dependency to allow me to create the uh, rest endpoints and the Spring Security dependency, of course, so the uh, Spring Boot Starter Security. I have nothing else here related to anything uh, uh, that uh, I uh, would uh, use. So it's the very, a very simple example to prove you how to call the post uh, endpoint from Postman or CURL having the CSRF protection enabled. Um, for that, we actually need some endpoints first. So let's create a controller class. I will create a controllers package here. And inside my controllers package, I will create a demo controller. Demo controller, let's call it, or hello controller, whatever you wish. And I will make it a REST controller and then I have two endpoints here to prove my um, the behavior of the application. We call it demo. We actually need to call it something like get demo because I will have a post demo as well. So get mapping here uh, to my demo returns uh, get demo. And then I will have the, basically the same thing again. Uh, but um, will be uh, related to a post, which you know it's a mutating operation, and that actually means that in order to call this method that returns post demo, I will need a CSRF token because um, by default uh, the mutating operations can't be called if my CSRF protection is enabled without providing a valid CSRF token. Uh, so I should be able to call this one, but I can't call this one and uh, uh, to get the CSRF token in this case I need to put it somewhere where uh, in a normal web application you will deliver it uh, through the header of the response or inside the body directly and then process, process it from there for example your angular front end will well, directly have it in the body wherever uh, it needs to do the uh, operation or you simply take it from the header uh, when you do the the first the initial get because at some point when you develop a web application of course you will have a first initial get at least uh, where um, uh, the uh, user uh, accesses the application in the browser uh, using a browser it does that initial get and then uh, that's where the the csrf token is uh, obtained obtained so you can use this uh, csrf token um, 
using uh, um, this kind of, um, of a flow. But in our case, we don't have now, we only have two endpoints. We have the get that I will use to get a token and then the post that I will prove I can call if I have the right token. And uh, for that, I will need to print somehow the token in the console or, or send it through the header. And the easiest way would probably be in my case here to simply create a filter and uh, put that filter immediately after the CSRF uh, uh, filter. And that's where the token already exists. And then I put it on the response back so that I can take it in my postman. I can take the value and use it to call the post uh, uh, operation. Well, I assume you already know how filters work, but if you don't know, um, if, you, if you watch this video and you don't understand how filters work, well, uh, remember that uh, I have already delivered nine lessons out of the Spring Security Fundamentals and one of them referred to filters. So uh, everything that I discuss here is basically uh, already discussed, uh, uh, all the, the things or the elements that I use here are, are already discussed in the first nine lessons. Uh, of the Spring Security Fundamental stream I have delivered on this channel and you can find them recorded and you can watch or rewatch them as anytime uh, as you uh, need and anytime you want and you can ask questions if you don't uh, understand something but uh, in this video I will go fast and I will assume you already know this, uh, these things so that's why I'm not discussing what this filter is because theoretically you can find already a lesson on the same channel uh, that explain the filter chain in Spring Security and how filters work in my case, I need to use this filter to get the CSRF token. So the CSRF logger filter, let's call it like this, uh, will in my case extend once per request filter. Uh, I, I won't make it a component because I don't necessarily need it, uh, being that I don't auto wire anything inside it. I will simply create a normal instance, but I need to, of course, override the, the um, uh, abstract method. This is the request and then of course we have the response as well and at some point we need to use the filter chain to deliver um, further the request and the response in the chain so I uh, call the do filter with the request and the response uh, and just before I will take the token if you have seen lesson number nine you know that the contract uh, describing the CSRF token in um, Spring Security is, representing by, is represented by the CSRF token interface so this is the token and of course I have no other option than just to cast it from object in this case but I know that the attribute called CSRF uh, has this uh, this value and then I can do whatever I want with the token value that I find inside this object as the attribute of uh, as the value of the attribute token and in my case what I want to do is set it as a header on the response I call this header CSRF token value you can choose what what uh, um, name you you'd like for this we will only see it in the response and then take the value from there and uh, then we put the value of the token there so that should be enough now and if we plug this filter into the filter chain just after the CSRF token then that should be enough uh, to, uh, to be able to see in the response the token and if we have the token in the response then we can call the post op operation as well. So let's create a configuration class, I will create a config package and inside the config package I will create my project config class project config. And of course, to be a configuration class, I need to annotate it properly. And then I need to extend the web security configurer adapter to do my configuration. Web security configurer adapter, sorry for that. And then I override the configure method. Uh, it's not mandatory, but uh, I will actually call HTTP basic here so you see clearly I'm using HTTP basic it was anyway a default if I wouldn't have done that uh, but I, I've done it now and uh, then I add a filter after add a filter after so my filter which is this one will be added right after the CSRF filter class and that's how we plugged in now the filter again uh, we have discussed this in one of the previous lessons I've recorded and um, the lessons basically are live so if you want to watch them every Friday you will uh, find a new live lesson 
uh, and we are still in progress with the Spring Security Fundamental Stream. So we have discussed this in one of our previous lessons, but we have a lot of other things to discuss like the OAuth 2 and uh, all the other things related to the global metal security testing is uh, unit testing with Spring Security and so on. A lot of things we still have to discuss. Mm, we have uh, configured the, the filter and uh, I hope this should be enough for us to call the endpoints. So let's see what happens. I didn't uh, add any user details, service and password encoder. That means I will rely on the default implementation provided by Spring Security. Uh, so that's why I will use the password uh, provided in the console, which I will copy from my console here. Uh, if you don't know what the user details service or password, password encoder are, uh, again, these were um, uh, detailed in the first couple of lessons of the Spring Security Fundamental Stream. You can find, watch the lessons free on this uh, channel directly and um, all the other stuff, nice stuff related to Java and Java frameworks. So I have copied this, uh, this password and uh, I'm going to my postman here. I create a new tab, uh, my HTTP localhost 8080 which is the default port and demo should be accessible uh, if I provide the proper authentication so I use the user but I need to provide the password I've copied from the console and when I press the send button then I get here the uh, response get demo and then I in the headers I should get here as well the CSRF token value and that's what I need to call my um, post endpoint. So I'm going now to a second tab and um, to call the post endpoint, I will of course need again to have also the basic authentication. So I will, I think it's copied. So the same one is copied here. Uh, uh, and uh, then in the headers, I need to add the X csrf token and the token value as well i take it from here and put it here and then i need to actually add also the cookie representing my session id we can get it here session id and it should be the same one as here so j session id equals something something so if i take it this way and put it here how it should be used and i get a 403 but i'm pretty sure this is because of my postman being crazy by the way postman has a lot of things and not necessarily working properly that's why i usually use uh, CURL um, in most of the cases but i i have resent this and i will try again i i have faced such problems uh, previously so um, I'm not sure if it is because of me, but I'm um, sure that it rather might be because of um, of uh, the postman not updating the headers, which happen to me often. Uh, I will, however, make sure sure that I have the right values again here and here. Uh, they seem to have been the right values. J session ID is there, and then I call it. Oh, that is that is. It was only postman, of course. It uh, it happened uh, previously to me. And you, you can see that I have actually managed to call the post operation. Uh, to do that, I needed to provide the proper CSRF token indeed. Uh, and I also had to provide the proper, um, the right uh, cookie value here. And that, that was basically because uh, the default implementation of the CSRF token repository relies on this uh, session ID. So uh, when it searches for the, the value of the token, it searches for the value of the token that was assigned to a, to a, to a session ID. So that actually means that uh, um, if I didn't, if I wouldn't have provided the session ID, then uh, it, the uh, uh, token would have been found, and then of course the request would have been rejected. Uh, that's the default implementation. You also know from our uh, lesson number nine of the Spring Security uh, Fundamental Stream that you can override the default implementation of the CSRF uh, token repository. Uh, I won't do that now, but I want to uh, remind you how that could be done. 
you know when I call from HTTP CSRF and then uh, then I can provide a customizer object here and in the customizer object you can do any kind of customization and one of the uh, kinds of customization you could do is provide a, a CSRF token repository uh, which is basically as you have seen in lesson number 9 the object um, telling uh, uh, how the token is generated, how the token is found and how the token uh, is um, uh, stored. Uh, so if you if you now go to uh, the CSRF token repository interface, I will comment this out, you will have the, the code available. So that's CSRF token repository. So this is the interface and again the three operations you have here, how the token is generated, saved and loaded. And you have multiple implementations for this. So the one relying on cookie or on the HTTP sessions and even one, one, one used for tests. But um, uh, you could create your own in which you don't necessarily have to use um, the session ID for, uh, for this. You can, uh, uh, for example, uh, create your own identifier uh, and rely on that own identifier. You can even, uh, I have even uh, used, uh, I, I didn't use, sorry, I have seen, however, even um, uh, situations in which this CSRF token repository was implemented to store persistent the CSRF tokens in a d database. I'm, I, I'm don't, not debating now if this is correctly, if this is a right approach or not. I'm, I'm not sure. It's depending on basically how um, uh, the application is implemented in the system. Uh, but I have seen that for one of the um, uh, application, uh, applications I've consulted uh, um, a, a, few, uh, a few months ago. Uh, so you can even do that if uh, if you have such a, such a request uh, of your such a requirement of your application, you can even implement something like this. And then, of course, you have to provide. That's where I wanted to 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 get. You have to provide all the needed data for the CSRF token to be validated. So that's why here I also have to provide the session ID because that's needed by the application to find the token and validate it. So that's why not the token is not only uh, is not the only one uh, needed to be provided. Uh, you can try your very basic implementation where you, for example, just use a set to store all the tokens and then don't assign them at all to any kind of uh, uh, of user and just assume that if you find a token there, the um, a token is valid that's that's uh, correct uh, as well but of course that wouldn't be a real world uh, approach because usually you do somehow uh, have to uh, have to link the token to a user otherwise uh, anybody knowing any token would be able to call the endpoints and which, which is the purpose of the CSRF tokens anymore in this case so remember that the CSRF tokens uh, are used to um, uh, prevent the CSRF uh, attacks or the CSRF vulnerabilities of the applications uh, the way we have discussed them in lesson number nine of the Spring Security Fundamentals stream. Anyway, the way I have called them now, I hope it clarifies and it answers your questions. Thank you very much for the questions. Uh, and uh, I'm waiting for um, other questions as well, for which um, I can do uh, nice demonstrations like this one. Thank you very much and have a great time for learning.